We're going to start our lesson today by looking at this piece of artwork by Dame Barbara Hepworth. And I'm going to ask you some questions about it. And they'll be the questions that we would normally ask in class to really get us thinking about a piece of art. You might want to pause the video on each slide so you have a chance to talk about the answers. So our first question is, what is the subject? So what can you see in the piece of art when you look at it? What do you think it's of, if you like? What media did the artist use? So was it a painting? Has it been drawn with pencil? Is it made of wool? Is it made of clay? Is it made of metal? Which media did they use? Next, we're going to talk about which visual element is the strongest. So when we do this in class, we think about being the owners of an art gallery. And the art gallery's got five rooms. One is for line, one is for color, one is for shape, one for pattern and texture, and one for shape and form. Now, in a piece of artwork, you normally find lots of different visual elements mixed together. But for you, if you had to choose just one room to put this piece of artwork in, which room would you decide on? Which visual element do you think is the strongest? And our last question, what does it make you think about or feel? Perhaps it reminds you of something or maybe conjures up an image in your mind about something or you, it just makes you feel a certain way. The name of this piece of artwork is Stringed Figure and it's a curlew. So I'm going to show you a photograph now of a curlew. So a curlew is a small bird with a long beak. And I wonder if you look back at Barbara Hepworth's sculpture, if you can see any of the features of the curlew when you look at it. So just like Barbara Hepworth did, what we're going to try today is to take straight lines and make them into curves. So we're going to be doing some weaving and some drawing. And there's some different tasks I'm going to explain. And just as normal, you can pick one that you would like to try, or perhaps you might want to try more than one of the tasks, or you might have your own idea that you want to explore. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to make a curve, a natural shaped curve using straight lines and we're going to use this box and start with. So what I'm going to do is cut the edges off. The next thing I'm going to do is draw a line all the way around the side of the box and it's up to you how deep you want this. Don't go too near the edge but maybe at least a centimetre or so. And try and keep it the same distance each. I'm going to make some marks now, maybe every two centimetres. Next I'm going to make a hole where I've made each of these points. So I've got a, I thought a drawing pin might be useful here. I'll keep my fingers on this side and then just push in through the drawing pin. And I thought once I had that hole, I could make it a bit bigger using my pencil, just push in like that. I might push my pencil straight through. Okay, so the bigger the box, the longer this will take you. So now I've got uh, holes on every side of my box all the way around. And what I need is a piece of wool or a piece of twine. Um, just use whatever you've got. You could also use thread and use a needle if you wanted to do this. You could make your holes a bit smaller if you're doing that. But I'm going to go for the for this um, piece of twine. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to count the holes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And I'm 
going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I'm going to start on this hole here and I'm going to pull this through. And I've just got a little bit of sellotape here just to hold that in place so that it doesn't. So I'm going to thread through from here to the first hole down here. So my, la my 11th hole up here to my first hole down here. If you use a square box, it would probably be easier. So you would have the same amount on each side. And I'm going to use my pencil. So if I just fold this in half, actually, like that, it will make it a lot easier to push through the hole. Just make sure your hole stays nice and open. This one's closed up a bit. There we go. to bring that through. So I want to pull it quite tight, but not so tight that the box starts to, to warp. And I'll come through my next hole, because my pencil's make it a bit bigger. And then I'm coming in to the next hole in the side in here. Once you get going, it will really make sense and it'll be a lot easier. Okay. And then I'm coming in again. So I'm kind of traveling down this way and traveling that way. If your, your wool or your string starts to get a bit short, like mine has, what you could do is just tape it at the side. I'm going to tape that bit on. And then I can start a new piece. Just use the same bit of tape to tape that down. Uh, start a new piece, just like we did before. So to finish it off, again, just use your sellotape and tape down the, the end and make sure it's nice and tight before you pull it off. And you can see there, you've got, you've used straight lines to make a really natural looking curve. And if we look at Barbara Hepworth's sculpture again, you can see on here, she's got a really similar idea happening on here. So you can have a look at where her lines have come and where her curves have been created. So um, next up, I think I'd like to try and make another curve um, on this corner. So that's what I'm going to do now. So to start off the other corner, I'm just going to count how many holes I have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This time, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm going to start on my tenth hole. Um, an option would be here to, to measure the length of this 
and divide it by 10. So if you wanted to do a bit of maths, um, say it was 30 centimetres long, you could have these being three centimetres apart. And if this was about 20 centimetres long, you could have these being two centimetres apart. So you'd have 10 and 10, and then your curve would go right to the edge of your box. So that could, that's a little option for you, a bit more complicated, but a little option if you would like to, to try that. So same again, a bit of sellotape to secure it, and then I'm going to just start weaving it through. So now we're finished, you can see we've got, we've made actually a really interesting shape around here, almost like a leaf shape in the centre. And I'm going to put in a, a piece of paper inside just so you can see it a bit more strongly. So you could maybe draw a picture and put it in behind, or um, you could line it with some wallpaper or something. And it could look really nice as a, a little sort of frame, you could have it sitting up on a shelf with some objects inside. So I've got another square of cardboard here and I'm going to mark along two corners and I'm going to do maybe two centimetres between each. You could do it between one if you want to get uh, more detail or you could experiment with different sizes. So I've marked it on this edge and then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to mark along this edge as well and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut in to each of these so maybe a cut that's maybe about a centimeter don't make it too small because it's quite hard to get your twine or your wool into okay so we've got cuts on this side and uh, cuts along this side and then we're going to take our wool and we're going to tape a little bit of this down. The part that has the pen marks on, I'm going to keep that as the back. So that's where I put my tape, so I don't see the pen marks when I start. So stick this bit down up here. And I'm going to just come through From there and I want to go from there to the first hole here first one here like that and then I'm going to go around so I can loop around like this if I want to you can manage to do that that's why if you make your holes quite deep you can do that and then you're going to come into the next one and keep it, give your um, wool or your twine quite tight. And then I'll loop it back around. Okay, so you can see our straight lines again have made another curve and that just needs taped on at the back. And if you want to, you could cut here and here and have another curve coming around there, just like we did on the, the box. So you can see on this one, I've added on the weaving at both sides. So you get the same effect as you do in the box. So if you want to explore this a bit further, you can do that just on some paper and you could cut this into a square. But for this one, I'm gonna think back to the, the Barbara Hepworth sculpture and I'm not going to have lines that are at right angles to each other so I'm going to have them the same length and I think I'm going to go for 
I love when I make these. Maybe see if I can make it 20 centimeters. So zero up to 20. And then I need another one that's zero to 20. And you could start to explore what you could do with different lines. You could have them quite close together. You could have them at this angle. You could have them at a different angle. See what you can um, come up with. I'm going to go maybe for about this angle. Right there. So again, zero up to 20. And I'm going to mark off each one um, one centimeter this time. So this time, rather than using wool, I'm going to be using my pen or pencil to make the curve. I'm going to go now from my furthest away one here to my closest one in, in here, my first line. So try and get it really, use a ruler for this. Okay, and then my second one's almost covered, but I'm just gonna go in. And just keep working through like that as you go. You can see this part is where you start to get that really nice curve starting as the lines start crossing over one another. So here we have all of these straight lines making this um, curve and this one looks like it's got a bit of perspective as well because these ones are quite wide and they get narrower as they go back. You could almost join, draw another one in here in a different shape or size. It's up to you. So that's lots of different ideas for you today. You could work on a box and you can do your curves in a box. And they said this would look really good on a sh sitting on a shelf. You could maybe put some objects inside it. You could have a go on a flat piece of cardboard. And you could then explore a bit further using pen or pencil and you can play around with different angles so these ones these ones were at a right angle and these ones here are at a smaller angle an acute angle you can change that line around and see how it would look how how different it would be play around what would happen if you just did your mark every two centimeters every four centimeters every five centimeters Experiment and explore and see what you can come up with.